From grainy black and white to high definition, VHS to DVRs, television has come leaps and bounds since it was invented almost 100 years ago. In fact, the word television now refers more to the content than the device itself. Case in point, you can watch this television show right now on your laptop, smartphone, or tablet. And as our viewing methods continue to change, so to do the programs we watch. I'm joined now by Kara Miller, host of WGBH's Radio's Innovation Hub, for more on the future of television. Hi. Kara is here. She knows all about radio, but now <laughs> it's all about the future of television. Yeah. So there was a big event this week. Um, Comcast announced that it was actually buying House of Cards, this popular Netflix series, which I've seen a few times uh, on Netflix. What's, what's the significance of that? Well, you know, go back a year, a little over a year, February 2013, and House of Cards debuts. And it really sort of took the television world by storm. And it's this fascinating thing because it's never been broadcast on television. And yet, it has won Emmys and mm -hmm. it has won Golden Globes and it really turned Netflix um, and Amazon's getting into this act too into a content provider they made shows that shows didn't have to go through ABC or NBC like the old gatekeepers well now Comcast wants, wants a piece of that. And so they've said, okay, well, we're paying money so that we can make on their Xfinity and on demand that we're going to make available to you that first season of House of Cards. So everybody is getting into this sort of content. It, it's, like I said, it's not mm. just the people who created content once upon a time. Are the networks worried about this? Because they used to be the kings of content. Exactly. I mean, one thing they certainly are worried about is that, you know, you still only have 24 hours in a day, right? And we see all all this fragmentation of the things you can watch. There are series on YouTube. There is Netflix. Uh, there's HBO Go, which is HBO's streaming service. You see it there. I mean, Hulu. Right? There's all these different ways of getting new content. And that's, that's hard for your ABC, your NBC, your CBS, Fox. Um, you know, one other thing that is tough for them is that Netflix can really cater to what you want. Mm -hmm. So they can say, you know, we want to appeal to women of, you know, this age who make this much money, who live in these places. We, we have decided that's really lucrative for us. And they like these kinds of plot lines. And they will just create a show that is, they know is going to appeal to people who have exactly that much money and live in those places. And it's an interesting thing because obviously ABC can't do that. They've got to create a show of general interest. But uh, Netflix can do that for one group and then they can do it for another group. And so they can make sure they hit all their target demos with different uh, series. Now, what about the cable companies themselves? Are they threatened in, the, in all of this? You know, I think they are the only ones in some ways that are not threatened. Because whether you're watching something streaming on your phone or, you know, on your laptop or whatever, you are using essentially their pipes, you know, their yep. cords to get into your house. They, they access more than 90 percent of American homes. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting, you know, you're getting your stuff via Comcast, via Time Warner, you know, all these ways. And to go back to your question about Comcast buying mm -hmm. the rights to air that first season of Netflix, they're not stupid and they understand that content is king, that it really matters what you offer. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they got into increasingly buying up fresh content that they can feed to you. But is it going to be a pay-per-view? Because let's see, I get, con I get Comcast. Uh, now I'm going to be able to scream it, scream it on demand. Am I going to pay for that? Or yeah, I think initially, oh. yes, you will. Although I wouldn't be surprised if there's tears. Again, they, they see how much money they can milk out of it. And then once season two is available on Comcast, maybe they make season one available for free. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's like multiple lives to something like House of Cards. Netflix is still ahead, still going to be ahead of Comcast. But there's going to be ways if you're willing to wait, just like movies, if you're willing to wait, you may be able to get it for cheaper. So we have this graph that shows just how uh, investments in the cable companies, yes, I mean, yes. you know, it's Time Warner in particular, but they're a lot larger than Comcast, but nobody's losing money investing in those. Right. I mean, because they control the means of distribution, and I don't see anytime soon a way of getting around them, no matter what it is you're trying to distribute. So, you know, if you're Disney and you've got these Disney movies and whatever, you still, I mean, Netflix recently made a deal with Comcast to pay them more money because Netflix uses so 
so much bandwidth. They want mm -hmm. priority. They want. They don't want you to have to um, drop a show while you're watching it. They want you to have a really mm -hmm. good, uninterrupted viewing experience. And they're willing to pay the Comcast and the Time Warners to make sure that happens. Hey, listen, two confessions. I was binge watching Orange Is the New Black on my iPad last night. There it is. Binge watching. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's an expression we didn't used to have. All right, Karen Miller. Thanks for all of that. Thanks.